I just jump to that real quickly. Got it. So if God says something old, he doesn't want to do anything new. Amen. He says, so they read in the book of the law of God distinctly, underline distinctly, and gave the sense, underline sense, and caused them to understand the reading. There you go. Distinctly, right? Gave the sense, and then understood the reading. So there you go. Observation, application, interpretation. Insight of the word. You follow what I'm saying? He's given the insight. That's three studies. Now go to 1 Timothy chapter 4. I want to move to that real quickly. I usually do a whole lesson on that, but we just don't have time. I want to do what God said about this, but y'all looked at me strangely. I just need to prove that word. So 1 Timothy chapter 4. And look at verse 13. It says, Till I come, give attendance to the reading, to the exhortation, and to the doctrine. Now we want to go up to verse 11. These things command and teach. Let no man despise thy youth, but be thou an example of the believers in what? Word. In conversation. In charity. In spirit. In faith. And in purity. Till I come. Give attendance to the reading. The exhortation of doctrine. Neglect not the gift that is in you, which was given thee by prophecy, which was with the laying on of hands by the presbytery. Meditate. There you go again. Like a cow. Meditate upon these things. Give thyself wholly to them, that thy prophecy may appear to who? All. Take heed unto yourself and unto the doctrine, continuing them, for in doing this thou shalt both save thyself and them that hear thee. But go back up to verse 13. Till I come, give attendance to the reading, observation, to the exhortation, application, and to the doctrine, interpretation. Now how do I observe the word? You just read it. You pray, Father, give me some new ones for understanding Jesus' name. You read it without underlining it. Don't care whether you pronounce it. The Holy Ghost knows the word. Okay? I can't have to pronounce half the word. Amen. But I know God knows. <laughs> Thank you, Lord. So you just read it. You get in there because the scripture says, I bring all things back to remembrance. But if it ain't in you, how can I bring it back? That's right. Amen. That's right. Now, exhortation, application. Now, what am I doing? Now, I'm highlighting stuff. I'm going right back and now I'm highlighting. Yeah. Interpretation. Now I can edify you because now it's not a mystery anymore. Because if you're not born again, everything I'm saying to you is nothing but a mystery. But once I observe it, and once I apply it, and I can interpret it, now the mystery has been revealed to me. Amen. That I can edify and build someone else. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I can go all day with that one. All right. He is talking about someone who wants to mock. We're back at Psalms 1 when he's sitting in the scornful. He is talking about someone who wants to mock spiritual things. If you're not careful, you'll go from walking to standing to sitting. This is the direct digression of a believer who wants to keep having fun with foolish friends Amen. instead of furthering his spiritual walk. The first level is walking. From walking, you're stopping. Now you're standing in the way of sinners. And before long, if you don't correct these type of people in your life, you'll find yourself sitting in the seat of the storm. All right, Go to on. Psalms 119. <laughs> Psalms 119. You saw that a little bit more time. Psalms 119. I like to be obedient. Amen? Amen. Amen. Y'all not getting more of here. Right? No, 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 no. Psalms 119. Look at verse 63. I am a companion of all them that fear thee, and of them that keep thy what? Precepts. So you need to become a companion of them that want to keep thy precepts. How do you know you have foolish friends? You ready? How do you know you have foolish friends? They're not spiritual enough to discern the will of God. They talk a good game, but they don't have no, they have no inkling of what God is trying to tell you at all. Amen. You got a bunch of proper lying. <laughs> <laughs> and exaggerating their stories. Amen. Number two, they have no fruit of godly decisions in their own life. You don't see no results. Come on. Amen. You don't have a reason to talk back while you're here. You say, God, I want to go. I'm going to submit. The leader can be wrong. Yep. He can give you a nasty order. But guess what? 
God is dealing with him. He's held accountable. It ain't for you. Man, I ain't doing that. I'm a man. Well, if you were such a man, what you doing here? <laughs> yep. mm. If you were so big of a man and you had it all together, why are you in Canaan Lake? Yeah. Sit with a bunch of other people who call themselves men. Yep. <laughs> Hello. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Oh <laughs> uh, boy, I got broken. Uh, I'm the most private, yeah, egotistical person you ever want to see in your life. God had to break me, and He's going to break you too. You got to go through the broken process from eight to eighty. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 Number three. They themselves are not trying to go from. You're going to find that some people enjoy the level they are on. Leave them there. That's mm -hmm. right. Let them stay right where they are. All right. See, that ain't Christian. Yes, it is, because you said, God, I need help, and I need healing, and I want to be whole. Okay. I, so, well, then go get selfish. <laughs> well, I ain't not supposed to be a Christian, huh, my brother? We got staff to do that. <laughs> Amen. 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 You're in the hospital. And I like to tell you, you're being trained to be soldiers. Yes, See, that's right. The devil's mad at each and every one of you who are ready to submit to authority. You know why? Because he know he lost one of the greatest soldiers in his army. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. yes. <laughs> you are the greatest soldiers. You there are you the go. most intelligent men that the devil lost. You know why? Because you know his tricks. Right. You're geniuses. <laughs> it takes a genius to figure out how to get hired today. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right yeah, it's true. yeah. It's true. So you're all geniuses. And now you decided to work for the kingdom? You're powerful soldiers. Amen. Amen. I like to call myself a sergeant major. Come on. I train people to be officers, and when they complete it, I sue them. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. Now watch this. Because right. one of my fights was this. Lord, I don't understand. Devote. Why aren't you devoted to that? I never devoted myself to a thing. Drug addicts don't devote to nothing. They don't devote to their wife, their kids, their job. They only devoted to their addiction. So I said, Lord, I can't relate to devote. Where's a dick? You only find this one word a dick one time in the whole King James Bible. Here it is. Let's go to 1 Corinthians chapter 16. Well, y'all take me way off my page. But that's all right. I'm letting God have his way. 1 Corinthians chapter 16. He always does it anyway. I'm not going to do it. Anyway, Lord. That's right. Now, you got to understand something. I can never relate to the vote. Now, when I read it in NIV, it said to vote. But when I read it here, I said, Lord, I can do that. You ready? I beseech you, verse 15, I beseech you, brethren, you know that the house of, what's that, Stephanus, that it is the first fruits of Octavia, and that they have addicted themselves to the ministry of the saint. It is shameful. It's an addiction. Mm -hmm. Why well, I've been addicted myself to everything. I can do that for you, Lord. I'm going to addict myself to the ministry of the saints. But if you ask me to devote, I ain't devote myself to my wife, my kids, my job, nobody. I only devoted myself to crack. But when you ask me to devote myself to the ministry of the saints and to addict myself to the ministry of the saints, I can relate to a date. Amen. But I cannot relate to the vote. Amen? Amen. And that's the only place you want to find that word. One time I mentioned the whole kingdom of the Bible. Because everybody in here had an addiction. As you see, I said had. That's right. Amen. That's right. The world calls you an addict. God calls you saved and blessed. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. You are no longer an addict. That's right. But if you think of yourself that way, then that's what you are. That's right. Even in my addiction, I begin to call me where God called me. A minister of reconciliation. Amen. An ambassador for his name. Amen. More than Amen. a conqueror. Yes. Blessed and victorious. Amen. 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 A prince. Amen. A king. A son. Come on. But never would I ever walk in no place and say, hey, my name is Warren and I'm an addict. That's right. But that Jesus is nowhere in the scripture. He said, Warren, you're an addict. He says, you're my son. You're saved. You're blessed. So adopt it. Because how you think. What is that? Out the abundance of the heart? About what? Space. As a man think of in his heart, so, so is he. Is he? Yes, he is. Come on. Man. So start changing your thinking pattern. Amen? Amen. Now, the other problem you're going to have 
I'm gonna jump over, is frowning foes. Now what does that mean? Some people don't want you to get a go come do attitude. Uh, <laughs> or walk in authority because they know it will create enemies. Everybody's not going to celebrate the attitude of go come do. You decide to walk in. But it's reality. Always remember when you decide to go, come, do, the devil will see to it that somebody will walk about you and talk about you and create all kinds of problems for you all right. and come totally against you because you decided to make up your mind to do what God told you to do. Hmm. And some of you need to be stopping that and saying, what about him? Peter did that. Did you know Peter did that? <laughs> How many of you know that Peter? Oh, where is that? John 20, I think. Y'all just moving me around. I'm getting ready to quit in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> so the devil will come up to you. Now, you know, Peter was a, uh, you know, he had, I like to say he was like me, hyper. Hyper. I'm getting ready to find it now. I'm going to in my notes. I think it's John 21. Yeah, there it is. That's the one I want. And uh, 21. No, 31. Yeah, that with me. Let's go down to verse. 21. Uh, supper. There we go. Let's go to verse 20. I just want you to know this is what Jesus came and Peter did. I love me. I love me. Yes, I do, Lord. Yes, I do. He got offended. Because you know, Peter would cuss every time I had. Peter, one minute saying you're the son of God, next minute he's saying, you know, uh, Lord, I ain't gonna let you die, and Jesus would be Peter. Peter, you know, he went fishing when Jesus told him to go have a ministry. And he said, I'm going fishing. Everybody followed behind him. So this was right after that, and Jesus appeared to him again while cooking fishing. So, verse 20, then Peter turned about, seeing the disciple whom Jesus loved following, which also leaned on his breast at supper and said, Lord, which is he that betrayed thee? And Peter, seeing him, said unto Jesus, Lord, and what shall this man do? Lord, what shall he do? You done told me to go feed sheep. Ask me that I love you and that I love you. Now what's he going to do? Now what did Jesus ask him in 22? Jesus said unto him, If I will that he tarry till I come, what's it to you? <laughs> go do what I told you to do. Follow thou me. What's it to you what I told him to do? You go do what I told you to do. Well, he ain't doing nothing. He ain't doing so. Why didn't you ask John? I said, I asked you. That's right. That's right. What are you doing in my office? Why are you over here? Did I tell you to be in the fitness room? Did I tell you to be in the basketball court? Didn't I tell you to go? Well, I didn't do that. I've been working all day. Well, I told you to do it. Mm. Amen. Amen. Mm. Testing of your authority. <laughs> What's it to you? Go do what I told you to do. Amen? Now, boy, I got them looking at me. I might need a bodyguard on the way out of here. <laughs> All right. You're also going to have this. Frowning family. When you have a go-come-do attitude, it won't sit well with your family. What people don't realize is that Jesus and his family did not get along well. Did you know that? Jesus and his family did not get along well. They did not understand Jesus' mission. They don't understand yours, either. They don't understand Jesus' mission. Jesus had a go-come-do attitude, and they did not always agree with it. Now watch this. The reason why I brought that out is your family, if they didn't get high, don't know what you're going through. They cannot relate. Half of y'all, especially if you're married, how many of y'all are here married? Amen. First of all, you had a wife that would come home and look at your situation, and she just about drove you out of the house and didn't even want to come home. Because she waited till you didn't even have the more money or in a position that you can't talk. Then all of a sudden she's talking your ear off. She was an enabler. And enablers like to control you. They say they don't want you, they say they want you healed, but deep in their heart they don't want you healed. Because they can still control you. I used to come home and she knew she couldn't get me. But the moment I was broke and sitting in the couch and the devil had me depressed. Then she'll want to talk to me. Look at you. You can't do nothing. But then the moment I got healed and was made whole and began to ask, well, how the bills do this? Where did this money go? How did that money go? Well, you never wanted to know it's home. Well, I want to know now. I'm trying to be the man. No. 
because they have to go get help too. That's right. Because they've been dealing with you. That's right. You can't go home and preach the Bible to them. You can't go home and break nothing to them and tell them they need to do this or need to do that. You're not in a position to do it. The only position you have with them is be an example. That's right. That's it. Let them see you work home church. Work home Amen. church. Serving the Lord. That's it. But talking about, baby, we need to go to church today. Ain't just fine. Let them see you going. Let them see you come home and read your word. Let Amen. them see you pray. That's right. Amen. Amen. Then you'll win them back. But coming home, tell them what they need to do. You lost that authority. That's mm -hmm. right. Yeah. You have to get it back. Good preaching. It's easier to lose, but it takes a long time to gain. Are y'all here, man? Hold on, huh? Yeah, Amen. Yeah, absolutely. So don't go home talking about, baby, I had faith. No, we need to do this. With you. You're wrong. Right. Kids, you need to do that. No. You lost that. Amen? Amen. And then some of y'all are going to wind up with new relationships because they can't deal with your anointing anymore. Now you're coming home with an anointed man, and now you're looking at them saying, you know, why was I ever with you? Yeah. You're still a sinner. You still want to live ungodly because they will take you back out and relapse. They're just waiting on you to come home to get you to get high again. Mm -hmm. And the first place that is if you're not married is fornication. That's right. Fornication will steal your anointing. And fornication will take you right back out there to relapse. Mm -hmm. I hope you hear me. That's right. Yeah, I heard you. The devil don't care that you won't get high. But he don't know when he leaves you to get you back down that road to keep you. You're right. You're right. What's the Greek word for fornication? Anybody know? It's porneia. What do you hear now? Pornography. So that's why God called it that because if He were to list every act that you couldn't do sexually, it, he, he know you'll find one that you want to do. So He says porneia, and the worst one is with your own hand, John. Because Jesus said, if you thought to do it, you did it. That's mm -hmm. right. That's the only scripture in the Bible that says if you thought of doing it, you did it. Because you can think of robbing the bank. But as long as you don't go around that bank. You didn't do it. But Jesus said, if you thought, you sleep with a woman. So you got to understand something. It says fornication destroys the body. But adultery destroys the soul. Hmm. So that means if fornication destroys the body, you're not only hurting you when you fornicate, you're also hurting me because I'm a part of that body. Because now you have taken yourself out of the body. That could have been a fruitful part of, of this body. Hmm. So now I got to do more work because you decided to sin. <laughs> oh, y'all don't like that one. That's a good one. Keep on hitting that. Yeah. Nehemiah 4. Oh, I'm sorry, Jordan. That's all right. The spirit was warming on me now. They're going to jump me completely off my face. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm going to show you what Jesus' family did like when I made it. Man, Nehemiah 4. And I think it's 14. Man, it's not none of this stuff. It's going to be my Nehemiah 4.14. Now watch this. Here's what we need to do. How many of you would kill somebody if they mess with their mom? Mm. <laughs> How many kill somebody if they mess with the kids? Yeah. Amen. But do you know if you do that, and I need your help in the war, that we will lose the war? Because <laughs> hmm. you're in here now. If somebody mess with your mom or your kids, what you going to do? You going to leave the program? The woman called you up and said, the kids are in trouble. Well, I'm going home. I got to go. You just lost. Especially if your brother said, man, you can't leave. You can't leave. Man, I got to take it. My baby needs diapers. Well, they didn't have those diapers when you were there. Yeah. Do this year. Don't watch God bless you. But here's mm -hmm. the reason. This is why God brought you together. Nehemiah 4.14 says, now, and I looked and rose up and said to the noble, to the rulers and to the rest of the people. Be not you afraid of them. Remember the Lord, which is great and terrible, and fight for your brothers, your sons, and your daughters, your wives, and then your house. So if I'm not fighting for you first, I'm going to lose the war. See, men go to war at that time. I don't want to go to war today. But all the men went to war, and if the father fell, or if that man fell, his son took his place. The women went there to what? Bear more sons to have the war. So are you willing to fight for your brother next to you? To the right or to the left? You got an issue with them? Do you want to win the war? Fight for your brother. Right. Then for your son. 
then for your woman. But if I go home to fight for my house first, out of the order of God, I'm gonna lose the war because I'm not a, I'm not there to help my brother fight. I think it was one of the kings in the Bible, I can't think of his name right now, it might have been Hezekiah, but he said, when you go to war, man, don't don't fight the guy with the scars. Go after the ones with no scars. Why was that? Because the ones with the scars were experienced. So go kill the ones that had no scars first, then we have enough men to fight the ones who were experienced. You understand what I'm saying? See, if somebody came to fight y'all, y'all got scars. Y'all powerful. They want to get out your way. But if y'all stand together, there's nobody to teach you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You need to be in unity, unity here in this Amen. place. Amen? Amen? But Jesus' family didn't like it. Now I'm going to get ready to close with this. John, I'm going to read this one scripture. I had a ton more, but God did it something different. Amen? John 7. I just want to show you when Jesus' family was messed up and didn't like the fact that he was doing what he was doing. Because I know Jesus had brothers and sisters too, right? Amen. Yeah. Amen. Some people freak out with that. I don't know why. Because, <laughs> you know, see, 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 I like to say it like this. Mary, his mother, was a very powerful woman. She's not to be worshipped. But ain't it funny how God chose a woman to birth the word? He didn't use male seed, which is corrupt. He used a woman to birth the word. So it came through her canal. He also used a woman to be the first one to see him when he rose from the dead. Because preacher means proclaimer of truth. So what did he tell Mary Magdalene? Go tell my brothers. I have He also used a woman to be the first missionary. You know how? The woman at the well, Samaritan, half breed, no respect. That's why he sent his disciples away, because he knew they would be pregnant. But she went back to the whole town and told them of a man who told her everything. And the scripture said, all the men got saved. Hello. Amen. 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 I don't know why I had to go there, but I did. But John 7, look at verses 1 through 5. And I'm getting ready to tell you a story. Why? Because Jesus broke all tradition. He was a, he was a changer. He came to change things. That's why we, when he rose on the eighth day, gave us new beginnings in him. Amen? That's why we go to church on Sunday, by the way. The eighth day, not the seventh. Five, look at verse one. What did I say? No, seven. Look at verse one. John seven, verse one. And it says, after these things, Jesus walked in Galilee, uh, for he would not walk in Jury, because they what? Jews sought to kill him. Now the Jews, feast of the tabernacle was at hand. His brothers therefore said unto him, Depart his and go to Judea, and thy disciples also may see the works that thou doest. For there is no man that doeth anything in secret, and he himself seeth to be known openly. If thou do these things, show thyself to the world. But, for here we go, for neither did his brothers believe in him. Mm -hmm. Meeting his physical brothers by Mary and Joseph. But you know that James was his physical brother. The book of James? Amen. James got saved later on. Amen. But he was the pastor at the church of Jerusalem. But James didn't even want to count himself worthy to be his brother. Amen. But not even, so you got to understand, your own family members don't want you to get to a certain level. Or oh, they have you on drugs and alcohol or whatever your situation may have been. But they don't want you following Jesus. Amen? Amen? They don't want you bringing home that Jesus junk, as they call it. But you need to tell them what Jesus did for you. And I'm going to close with this. Because the way I got this, I was laying in the bed. And I said, God, now this ain't in the Bible. This is Brother Warren. Okay? This is how I envision what happened in heaven for me to bring this story to you. I'm, Jesus is in heaven. Because Jesus sits on the right side. Holy Ghost sits on the left. Why is that? Jesus has power and authority. The Holy Ghost has instruction and correction. Amen. That's why he lives in you. That's why you get conviction. Amen. So, all of a sudden, the Father is just thinking out loud. Who can I get to go and save the whole world? And Jesus looks at him and says, Father, I'll go. Then God said, Who can I get to come unto the lost children of Israel and to the Gentiles and bring them the gospel? Jesus said, well, I'm not coming to 
And the father said, now who can I get to do? 